Thank you for that. Uh, welcome again, everybody. I'm Jamal Corner. I'll be facilitating tonight's information session. If you require any Spanish translations for the session, please follow the directions provided on the screen. I'd also like to remind our speakers to speak a little bit slowly tonight uh, as tonight's session is being translated simultaneously. Joining us tonight, we're happy to have Dr. Castro from the Board of Education, our superintendent, Dr. Gudio Crossway, assistant superintendent of education services, Dr. Shauna Dinkins, chief business officer, Gregory Fromm, and assistant superintendent of human resources, Dr. Brian Lucas. At this time, I'd like to invite our board member, Dr. Castro to, to offer a few words. Dr. Castro. Thank you. Good evening, Linwood families and community. Buenas noches, familias y comunidad de Linwood. I would like to thank you for participating in this informational meeting. I recognize that this is a complex issue that will impact our lives. And so it is important that we begin this conversation today about these impacts and collaborate for a possible, for a positive solution. Tonight, you will hear more about the steps we are taking to remedy the high school construction issues and how we plan to accommodate our students in our academic year 2020 through 2021. I would like to reassure you that the Board of Education is committed to resolving issues at Linwood High School quickly and responsibly, holding accountable those responsible. I would like to thank our community for a steadfast support as we navigate these issues together. And I invite you to continue to participate in information meetings and share your concerns. Gracias, los invito a que continúen participando en las reuniones informativas y que compartan sus inquietudes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Castro. Now I'd like to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Crossway, who will provide an overview of tonight's session. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Conner. And thank you, Dr. Castro. Uh, thank you, Dr. Castro, for joining us today, for your support and your unwavering leadership to the Linwood Unified community and to everyone attending tonight. Thank you for attending. Um, you know, this is our first informational session for the community. And so we really appreciate that you're here with us because there are so many things that you could be doing at this time as well. And I want to make sure that you, your family, and your loved ones are all doing well. I know that there are a lot of questions, and we will do our very best to answer as many as we can today. But we will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct any questions that you may have to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today, we will provide you with a summary of the issues, as Dr. Castro shared, we are facing and our current instructional plans for the next academic year. And at the end of this meeting, we'll have a question and answer session. While we know that this situation is not ideal, we are making these plans with student safety as our number one focus. And we plan to make these shifts as seamless as possible. As a district, we cannot compromise on student safety. I will say that again. As a school district, as parents, as a community, we cannot compromise on student safety. Now, let me provide you with some background information regarding the timeline of events that led to these realignment plans. <clears throat> the plans for the instructional shifts were sparked by the discovery of structural issues at Linwood High School following the unexpected failure of the exterior roofing panels, also called soffits, at Linwood High School. Linwood Unified launched an immediate review to determine the extent of these issues and to make the necessary repairs. Linwood Unified families were also provided with high level information that there had been a structural issue that we were looking into. Our school board, immediately scheduled an emergency board meeting 
to address the situation in June. Lewa Unified quickly launched a review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. And as you can see on this timeline, numerous meetings took place and ultimately, Lewa Unified hired an independent structural engineer to help us assess the safety of the building while also investigating the cause of the collapse. Additionally, we have worked closely with the California Division of State Architects, also known as DSA, to address these concerns. Once again, once these soffits were identified as concerning, our board quickly acted to hire a firm and an overabundance of caution to remove the ceiling soffits. Following these meetings, the next month, July 23rd, our school board made an agreement with Petra Structural Engineers, the independent engineering firm, to assess the condition of the plaster soffits at Linwood High School and into an agreement with Delterra to provide emergency project oversight of the soffits. In September, our school board approved an emergency resolution to remove all soffits at Linwood High School. And then the following month in October, on October 8th, our board approved agreements with contractors for their emergency removal of these soffits. The following month, on November 8th, our school board held another special meeting and study session. And within a few days, on November 12th, our school board approved an agreement with the engineering firm to assess the condition of various overhead items on the Linwood High School campus. For a little bit more background information regarding the October 8th board meeting, our school board again entered into service agreements with the specific companies of AP Construction and Fast Track Construction. And then in November, on November 12th, our district made a structural engineering service agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to again assess the condition of the various overhead items at Linwood High School. The following month on December 10th, we entered into an agreement with TYR Incorporated to provide assessment services in conjunction with the emergency plaster software removal at Linwood High School. And then just last month, on Sunday, January 24th, our school board held a special meeting to review and update um, on the Linwood High School facilities and the proposed instructional shifts for the next school year. At this meeting, our school board emphasized that we must continue the process to be very public, very transparent with all decisions, placing student and staff uh, safety first. The following Monday, we met with our administrators on January 25th. Our district informed school principals of these shifts. And again, we met with the staff at Linwood High School and at Linwood Middle School immediately the next day. And on Tuesday, the following day on January 26, we notified families that the structure concerns were serious and that plans were in development to physically remove instruction off Linwood High School's campus while the investigation continues and repairs are made. As a district, we are planning to move all Linwood High School student instruction to another campus, as you may have heard already, Linwood Middle School during the 21-22 academic year, which of course also impacts middle school and elementary age students. Please note the following dates of future information sessions and the respective topics. Each info session will be recorded and made available on the district website in English and in Spanish. So again, if someone misses the meeting, they can go back to our district website and get that information in either language. Throughout this transition, we will continue providing you with regular updates, sharing new information as it becomes available through a variety of platforms, as you can see here, website, phone calls, social media, and our info sessions like you're attending today. We also wanna hear from you. We will also be gathering feedback 
through a digital survey that will be sent to Linwood Unified School District families this month. So please share the word about that and be aware that the information, the survey is coming. As always, I personally want to thank you for your steadfast support of our school district as we continue working together to create the strongest learning environments and strive to ensure the success of every one of our students. And again, just as a reminder, at the end of this session, we will respond to questions that you post on the Zoom chat. So please don't wait to the end. Please start entering your questions right now. Um, post your questions in English or in Spanish, and we will address them at the end of the, the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. And yes, the, the chat is open for any and all questions. At this time, I'm gonna introduce uh, Greg Fromm. He's gonna provide more detail on the construction issues. Mr. Fromm. Thank you, Jamal. We will now take a look at the affected buildings. The G building, the central multi-story facility where the classrooms are located, has been closed for use since June, 2020. Out of an abundance of caution, the district had the engineering firm assess all buildings on the campus. To a lesser extent, there are structural concerns at other LHS buildings. Once the investigation is complete and repairs are identified, a timeline will be set and shared with the community. At this time, we believe that the repairs to the lesser affected facilities could be completed before the 21-22 school year begins. At this time, we do not have information on the cost of the repairs or remedies to the LHS campus, but the district will share these details once they are known. The district will aggressively pursue remuneration from anyone deemed responsible for construction flaws, as well as matching funds from available state facility dollars. As you know, the Linwood community has supported bond measures for facilities improvements in recent years. In 2012, the community supported Measure K, a $93 million bond measure, which has so far funded $52.7 million in repair projects and upgrades. The community also supported the $65 million me Measure N in November of 2016. This measure has funded over $15.3 million in projects to date. In January of 2020, the district issued an additional $25 million in bonds for repairs and upgraded projects across the community. It's important to note that the community approval of Measure K and Measure N including gu included guidance for how those bond funds were to be used with a focus on specific facilities and repairs needed across the district. Funds from past bond measures have been spent or are currently committed to projects. In closing, here is a list of a few completed and pending projects at sites throughout the district. Back to you, Jamal. Thank you for that, Mr. Fromm. I just wanna remind our speakers, and that includes me, to speak a little bit slowly for the benefit of our simultaneous translation. Also wanna remind the audience to continue submitting your questions in the chat, and we will answer those during our Q&A session. At this time, I'm going to introduce Dr. Shauna Dinkins. She's gonna highlight our current plans for realignment. Dr. Dinkins. Thank you, Jamal, and good evening, families of Linwood. Now that we've provided background on the construction issues, we would like to outline the instructional shifts for next year. Linwood High School students will attend the Linwood Middle School campus, which formerly housed Linwood High School. Current fifth graders will remain at their elementary schools next year for sixth grade. Cesar Chavez and Hostler Middle Schools will house seventh and eighth grades with most Linwood Middle School students attending Hostler. These adjustments are planned for the 21-22 school year, but may be extended as needed based on the extent of the construction issues at Linwood High School. Here we have a map that outlines proposed school feeder patterns 
detailing where elementary students will promote for middle school. Modifications will be made to the Linwood Middle School campus to ensure sufficient capacity, as well as to facilitate stronger student-to-student -student connections and engaging student life programs within COVID-19 safety parameters. Those modifications include adding portable classrooms. The district will also reclaim any unneeded classrooms that have been leased to secondary users. Our goal here in Linwood is to make sure that this transition is as seamless as possible. As part of that effort, district and school administrators are doing all they can to maintain Linwood High's existing instructional programs, electives, and after-school activities as the school shifts to the LMS campus. We are still formulating our plan to accommodate these programs and identify any necessary adjustments. We will share this information with families as soon as possible. Additionally, students will be able to access certain Linwood High facilities in the upcoming 21-22 school year for after-school use, such as the gym and sports fields. The district is also exploring options for after-school uses and will share that information as it becomes available. Now I will turn it over to Jamal. Thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. And I just wanna thank our audience, obviously for joining us here tonight for our presentation. Uh, please know that many of these details and plans are pending, uh, but we remain focused on our goal, which is of course to do what is best for our students. We're gonna continue to provide regular and transparent updates. We'll do that through our school and district websites, as well as through messages emailed to our families. Este, ¿por qué? Disculpe. Disculpe. ¿Por qué no contesta lo del chat? Lo que dice en el chat. En esta mismo... Have medio. somebody mute. I think that might be our... May, may I just respond to that, Mr. Corner? Sure, you can. So we, we just got someone who unmuted and, and asked a question as to why are we not responding to the questions in the chat? And I know we have the translation available. So just want to let you know that we're, we're almost done with our presentation. And Mr. Corner will be facilitating the questions that we receive on the chat. So we will be answering the questions on the chat. And, and I know that you may also have more questions after this meeting. So we're going to also share that information with you. So let me go back to Mr. Corner so that we can get to the Q&A. But we're basically done with our presentation. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's the perfect segue to our Q&A now. Uh, we will answer the questions that you've submitted in the chat. And I see quite a bit. Um, so we're going to answer these to the best of our ability. Uh, before we begin, I'm just going to remind you uh, that if you have a complex or personal question, you may email those to meetings, meeting questions, excuse me, meeting questions at mylusd.org, which is also on the slide here, for a direct and private response from us. For those of you watching this session at a later date, we're going to also encourage you to send your question to the email address on the screen. Thank you for that. Now I will slide through the questions here and I'm gonna talk particularly slowly to give our translation time. Uh, the first question I have is, how would I go about transferring my child to Fireball, seeing that it's closer to home? Uh, Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Of course. Um, what I was not able to state uh, earlier was um, we will accommodate transfer requests um, as space allows. Um, you can go to our student services office and we're also in the process of putting a transfer form online for you at our Linwood Unified website. Um, you can also call our district office and we're happy to assist you in preparing for that transfer. Thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. We'll slide over to another question here, which is, will all grades be going to LMS? And is there enough space for all students? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to feel that one again? 
So the current plan with the feeder group pattern is for our current eighth graders at LMS will transition onto high school, current seventh graders and incoming to um, what would have been LMS will attend Hostler. Should a family need assistance and want to go to CCMS, we are happy to accommodate those requests as space allows. Thank you for that. I have a transportation question here, and it is, will the MTA bus line and or city of Linwood be cooperating by providing transportation for students by perhaps adding more micro buses or other forms of transportation? So I think is, are we gonna uh, collaborate uh, with the city to uh, help in transportation? I'm gonna throw that question. Dr. Crossway, did you have a- Sure. Into this? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Corner. This is a, a great question. It's one of those things that we're getting a lot of families asking about. So we are definitely exploring all options. We wanna, again, like I said at the very beginning, is to make this as seamless as possible. And, and I'm glad to also share with you is that we are working closely with the Linwood City because this affects all of us. And so again, they, they are definitely in support. They are definitely collaborating with us. And again, we wanna keep hearing from you. So that's why it's important for us to have these sessions because there are things that maybe we haven't thought about like the transportation. And so again, that survey that's gonna go out, I mean, right now we have about 80 some people on this info session. We had about 30 some this morning. We have 10 info sessions total, but I know that a lot of people are not going to be able to attend. So that survey is so critical. Please make sure that again, you fill out that survey, follow us on social media to get regular updates. Make sure that we have your correct phone call. I know sometimes I call and leave a message and some families are hanging up, but oftentimes we also don't have the accurate phone numbers. And then the other thing is, is visit our district website. We have regular updates there every week. We have a YouTube channel. We have Twitter, Instagram. I know we have some students on the chat as well in this Zoom session with us. So again, talk to your, to your children, to your kids. I know they know how to navigate all these different platforms, but thank you for asking that question. And again, as more information comes to us, we'll have a better response and more detailed response as well. Thank you for that. We have a question about cost. However, getting this addition building for the school district is spending money, money that can be used in the repairs. To me, it will be a waste of money that can be used later. Uh, Mr. Fromm, would you like to provide some insight into cost of this project? And our spending? Yeah, Jamal, at this time, we don't know what the total cost is going to be once we complete all of the inspect all the inspections and we know what the repairs need to be done, um, then we'll we'll know what the total cost will be and we'll be able to provide that information at that time. Thank you. Our next question. In case there's not enough rooms for all students to attend LMS. What other plans will we have? Is it possible to continue to have online classes? I'm gonna throw this over to Dr. Dinkins. Thank you, Jamal. Uh, we projected a um, little over a thousand students to fit at Hostler, so we have space there. And we have a capacity of about 800 over at CCMS. So with our current numbers and projected numbers, we're confident we will have the space. Thank you for that. And we have a question about staffing assignments, which I know is a popular question. We received some from our morning session. Uh, it's will the LMS teachers move with the LMS students to Hostler and CCMS? If yes, how will they be split up? Dr. Dinkins, did you want to take this one? I'm going to turn to Dr. Lucas on this one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dinkins and Jamal. Uh, so the majority of teachers from Linwood Middle um, will go to Cesar Chavez and to 
Hostler, uh, but we need to remember also that some of the students that would have gone to Littlewood Middle next year will actually be remaining at the middle, I'm sorry, at some elementary schools. So uh, staff will be uh, redistributed there as well. Thank you for that, Dr. Lucas. Uh, speaking for higher grades in LHS, will there be enough space for seniors and juniors at LMS? Mr. Fromm, did you want to field this question? Yes, there, there will be enough space. Um, we're going to have to bring in some portable classrooms to the site, uh, but there will be enough there will be enough space to house the whole nine through twelve school at LMS once all of the um, all of the work has been done, bringing in portables and upgrading some of the facilities. Thank you for that. Our next question. Uh, if we run to, or if we go to on-campus learning, will it be a hybrid model? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to take this? I'm sure. Uh, right now we're following all the guidance of our Department of Health. The current plans for return to school at this time, once, we are out of the purple tier, um, are specific to elementary. We are still awaiting guidance for what will happen with secondary students. And we will update our community and our families as soon as that information becomes available. Thank you for that. We have a question about health and safety here. Given that you are moving more students to schools, what is your plan to follow measurements for COVID-19? I'm going to throw this to Dr. Lucas, if you wouldn't mind fielding that question. Sure. So um, even though there'll be more students in some of our schools, we'll have the classroom space available for those students. And of course, uh, we will be in full compliance with any sort of regulations from the County Department of Health in regards to COVID safety precautions. All right. Thank you for that. Someone is curious in terms of the move, how many students per class? And again, they reiterate whether we can keep uh, an online option. I can, I can answer that. Thank you. I can read it quicker. So the, the number of students per class re remains the same. And you know, we have an agreement with our teachers association in terms of how many students uh, maximum per class. And, and we respect that agreement. There always are some circumstances where we may have an extra student or two, um, but our goal is to maintain our student ratio. Now that's assuming that we're continuing on the virtual environment because realistically, even for the fall, and I know someone asked this question, even for the fall, the COVID-19 virus is still here. And, and we have to continue following the Department of Public Health and the CDC guidelines. And so right now we have that virtual environment and, and we're anticipating that if things should change and we're hoping that they get better is that we'll be able to have a hybrid approach. And, and right now those guidelines call for 12 students to one so that we would not have more than 12 students in, in most of our classrooms. There may be some classrooms for example, PE, where they're outside and they're able to spread out a little further and, and still be safe and still follow those guidelines. But again, as a district, we, we've made a lot of progress. Nope. We have more kids now who are graduating. We have more okay, kids who are going to college and we wanna continue making sure that we have those strong quality programs. Our CTE programs, our due enrollment with the local community colleges so students can take college classes. I know I need to slow down. So that students can take college classes while they're in high school. Our AVID, the college visits, those are all things that they're not going away. Right now, we're talking about a physical movement from one location to another. But the reality is that we may still be on an online platform during the summer and maybe even into the fall. So there's, there's still a lot of questions about that. Thank you for that, Dr. Crossway. And we actually have quite a few questions about uh, class ratio 
as well as the online option. Um, so I don't want anyone to feel as though I'm skipping their question. Um, we're kind of lumping them in together. I'm also going to remind you uh, if you feel a question maybe wasn't answered or you have a additional question later, you're more than welcome to submit it uh, to meeting questions at mylusd.org. Excuse me, if I, if not, I can use a computer right now, it's on my phone, I have a question. Um, what happened with the parking lot? So the teachers and they people, okay, you don't have parking lots and they have tickets on the Wednesdays and things like that. Oh, I'm going to also just remind, uh, thank you for the question. I'm um, going to remind participants if you wouldn't mind uh, muting during the meeting and we'll, we'll funnel our questions uh, to the chat. Appreciate that. I can answer that really quick though. Sure. Re regarding the parking, parking is tight in a lot of areas, right? And our, some of our schools were built before 1940. And if you've driven lately, uh, you know, over by Lincoln or Wilson, you, you see that there's a lot of work happening. Drive by Linwood Middle School, there's a lot of work happening right now. And, and we know that we would have to make more parking available. So that's one of the first things that we're doing is, is making sure that we have sufficient parking because we also wanna be good neighbors. And we know that although parking is tight, you as the community, you also need more parking. So we're, we're going to accommodate our sites with, with making more parking available for our employees. But just again, remember that through the summer and very likely through the fall, we'll still have either a hybrid approach or continue with some, to some extent, the distance learning. We will not, we are, no one is expecting that all kids will be coming back like we had prior to March, 2020. So I, as much as we want to see your kids, as much as we wanna see our staff, it's just not likely to happen. It's, it's most likely that we will continue having some sort of a hybrid approach or continuing with the distance learning. And the question with virtual learning, we have a virtual academy and, and maybe for our future sessions, Let's make sure we include the virtual academy website, phone number, because we know that for some families, even with the vaccine, it's not going to be available for anyone under 16. And you may want to have your child continue with the virtual environment. Your child may be thriving on the virtual environment. And so we want to be able to give you those options. Now that you and your children are well equipped and, and have the capacity with the technology is to continue that option. So we have a virtual academy and it's available for students from elementary all the way through high school. And, and that's an option that we heard from you that was really important. So once we come back in person, once we come back with the hybrid, it's going to continue that virtual academy is not going away right now. It's, it's going to continue. So that's something that you as a community have made very clear to us that that's really important. And so we wanna strengthen that. We have conversations right now with the Department of California, um, California Department of Education, and, and we're bringing in college courses to our high schools and to our middle schools so that your child can take college courses and get college credit as young as 12 and 13. And so we did that as a pilot last semester and it was very successful and we wanna continue doing that as well moving forward. Thank you for that, Dr. Crossway. Moving along, we have a question here. How will it be for PE and other physical education such as sports, dance, clubs, the LMS gym is small and we don't have the LHS auditorium. I think this also kind of loops into a question about, are we gonna to try to preserve the programs as they transfer uh, to new schools? Uh, Mr. Fromm, did you wanna field this? Yeah, our, our intent as we're, we're here today, we're hoping that we will be able to have the use of the Linwood High School gym, um, the PAC and possibly the media center as well for next school year 
Um, if repairs need to be done at those facil facilities, we anticipate them being able to be done by the end of this school year to be available for next school year and that. Uh, with that also being said, we also believe they will be able to use the athletic fields and uh, for sports over at the current Linwood High as well next year. Um, so that's, that's the answer for that one. Thank you. We have a question here about special ed. Um, how will it work for special ed students? And have we thought about how the change will affect some students? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Of course. Um, when we made these decisions, all students were a part of that. Uh, we currently have programs at both Hostler and CCMS. And um, in indirect answer to that question, we also know that sometimes change is not easy for not just our students with special needs, but all students. So the staffs at both schools are working diligently to make sure that it is a seamless transition, both for our staff, most importantly for our students and families. All right, thank you. We have a question here. Are you going to have more campus safety out in these schools or just one or two for the whole school? Dr. Crossway, did you want to speak to campus safety? Absolutely. You know, student safety is, is always a, a priority. And so as we make the adjustments, one, we're talking in collaboration with, with the Linwood City, but we're always in communication with the Sheriff's Department. And, and, and the other thing that you're going to see is you're going to see an increased presence of safety officers and staff around the current Linwood Middle School site. And when we talk about having an increased presence, it's not just at the current facility, but right now or pre-pandemic, you saw our staff on Bullis. We were at Taco Bell on Atlantic and Imperial. We were on Imperial before and after school because our kids are our responsibility. And we wanna make sure that they are safe before and after school on the way to school and on the way home. And, and we wanna make sure that all students from the little ones to the older ones feel safe. I wanna make sure that every kid in, in Linwood knows that we love them, we believe in them and we want them to succeed. And so that being said, yes, absolutely. You'll see an increased presence of safety staff at, at our schools. And so I, I know that we have staff on our on our Zoom meeting right now, and, and sometimes we we, get, we in, the, in the morning session we got some questions. Well, you're going to reduce staff? No, we are not planning on reducing staff. We're going to have more kids at some of our school sites, and we're going to make sure that they have the appropriate staff to support that as well. We're not changing the number of students with the teachers. We're going to continue having again quality programs. And, and again, if that's why these sessions are so important because there's misinformation out there. And, and that's where I need your assistance. I need you to help make sure that our students and our families, all of our staff know that we're continuing with our commitment. We're continuing with our goals as a school district. Is this difficult? Absolutely. Is this something that we wanna tell you? No, I wish I could tell you that we weren't making any changes, but that's not the right thing to do. And sometimes for us, these tough decisions, they're difficult, but in my heart, I know it's the right thing. I wouldn't send my kids to a school that's not safe. And, and if you were to see Linwood High School right now, we have it taped off with yellow tape. I've gone personally to see the structure and, and, and let me tell you, I got to put on a hard hat and we could only walk in certain areas. A, a ceiling should not collapse. When you go into a restaurant, when you go home, you go to a public place, ceiling should not fall. And nothing that you could have done in terms of maintenance would have stopped that. Because people have told me, well, Gudiel, why didn't you use the money to prevent that? you know what, we don't have a crystal ball to look into the future. 
But I'll tell you this, when I go home and when I walk anywhere public, I'm not looking up thinking that the ceiling is going to fall on me. No one should be looking up. These are things that should not happen. And, and someone says, well, maybe it was the cold weather. I don't care how cold it gets, how hot it is, earthquakes, it should not happen. And, and for us, it's, it, it's the right thing to do. And so, again, I want to thank you for being here because you're taking the time during dinner, during family time, you're, you're tired, you, you've been working all day, you got another Zoom meeting, but you're here to get the accurate information. And again, that's why we have this uh, link, these links here, so that you can send us any questions you may have in the future. Take a screenshot of this, take a picture of this, go watch this presentation at a later time. Come to the next presentation tomorrow at six o'clock at night, right? To make sure that we're saying the same thing because we wanna do right by Linwood and we wanna make sure that you feel that we're doing what we can. And, and when I look back at this, I wanna know and, and believe that we were doing and did everything that we possibly could to make sure that our students are safe. And at the same time, we continue with the, the quality programs. Thank you. I think that dovetails into another important question. Um, who is responsible for this? Uh, Mr. Fromm, if you wanna maybe speak a bit to the process and the investigation and, and maybe the difference also between uh, the G building and, and other buildings. Well, in terms of we're still, it, we're still in the process of our investigation with our structural and engineer in that. So it is yet to be determined, determined, determined who is at fault here. Uh, the G building is the three story build the building at LHS. That is where the majority of the classrooms are held. Um, the rest of them are one story buildings like the gymnasium, the administration building, the PAC center and media center. Thank you for that. And I think our next question here, it's just about the time frame. Um, do we believe that the transition will require the entire 2021-22 uh, school year? Mr. Fromm, did you wanna field that one also? At this time, we're preparing for at least the 21-22 school, school year, but as of uh, beyond that, we don't know. As soon as we do, we will release that information. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question uh, just about our timeline in terms of uh, reopening schools. Um, when we expect students to go back and will they require a vaccine? Dr. Crossway, would you like to field this? Yes, thank you. Uh, great question. Again, I can tell you that right now, there is no vaccine available for anyone under 16. The US leads the world in vaccine administration. We got 27 million people who have received at least the first dose. However, the, the testing for vaccines for people under 16 is currently underway. It could take another six to nine months just for the testing. Once the testing is approved, you, you've seen how long it's taken us to just get the vaccine going out for the adults. So it's gonna take some time. Now, is the vaccine going to be required? Not yet, and, and I don't know. So I gotta say those two answers, not yet, and I don't know. Will it be required by the school district? No. We as a school district cannot legally require adults nor students to be vaccinated. The California legislation, state lawmakers are the ones who, make, who can make it a requirement, but as a school district, we cannot. So I hope that answers some of the questions. So again, there's currently no vaccine for anyone under 16. We don't know how long, we're hearing between six to nine months for that to become possibly available. Currently, there is no legislation 
at the state level requiring the vaccine for COVID-19, nor for adults, nor for kids. And then the question about when are kids going to be able to come back? You know, this, this changes all the time. And, and for us, we would like to be able to, I know a lot of families are reaching out to us about childcare, about returning to uh, on campus. And we wanna continue providing some childcare support. We wanna open up um, athletics for conditioning so that students are coming together with their peers and seeing some sunlight, getting some sunlight and, and just having that social connection with, with their, their peers. Um, so we're gonna continue doing everything that we can. Our teachers continue working really, really hard. They're doing incredible things right now. And, and I know they're exhausted. And, you know, it's, it's almost a year of this. And it's, it's gonna take a long time to recover from this. So anything that we can do as a community with our local churches, families, school districts, St. Francis, city, to support each other is, is so critical because I know it's gonna take some time for, for this to, for especially our youth, right, to recover. You can imagine, and I know how hard it is for us as adults, but now you can imagine our youth and just connected to that question, I just saw it pop up in the chat about the mask. So even with the vaccine, we will be requiring the face mask, even with the vaccine, because having the vaccine available, available to our staff, again, it's not available to our students and we want it, we have a responsibility to protect each other. And, you know, until we get 100% of people vaccinated, there's going to be, to a certain extent, those safety protocols, the physical distancing, the face mask, the hand sanitizing. Those are going to be things that will be with us for some time. Thank you for that. We have a question about our seniors, our class of our 22 seniors, actually. Um, do we have any plans for senior activities? For the class of 2022. Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Uh, yes, thank you, Jamal. Um, as Dr. Crossway has stated, we're following all Department of Health guidelines and mandates. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like in the fall, but I know even right now, it is our hope that we're able to return with seniors having activities as traditionally they would. But at this time, I cannot um, answer that in the affirmative as we're still waiting for results from the Department of Health. But we are planning small activities as best as we can within the guidelines as they become available. Thank you for that. Uh, we have someone asking us just to go into a bit more detail or perhaps uh, revisit our process on the LHS buildings being inspected, uh, who is doing the inspections, and will the community have a report uh, available on the results? Mr. Fromm, would you like to field that question? Yeah, the current inspections, as noted, uh, Dr. C was speaking, uh, is being done by Petra Structural Engineers. When it's all when it's all done, there will be a report that will be coming available the best we can. Thank you. Also, going to remind everybody, I know that some of you jumped onto the meeting late. That these meetings are all being recorded and will be made available to you uh, for you to revisit for anything you may have missed. Um, I also want to um, remind everybody that we have instructions. I just had them put on the screen. I know that some some of you were requesting accessing the information in Spanish. Uh, so please uh, follow the instructions on the screen here. Claudia, if you wouldn't mind uh, revisiting those instructions in Spanish. Sí, claro. Hacia arriba de su pantalla, haga clic en View Options para ver las opciones de idiomas de la presentación. Y en el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación para las opciones de audio. Thank you so much. We have a question here about the cost of repairs. How are the repairs going to be funded? 
if they are being targeted to be completed before the school year, where are the funds coming from? So Mr. Fromm, maybe if you wanna clarify a bit about the funds and also the timeline. For repair work to be done at Linwood High School, depending on what needs to be done, we'll be reaching out to the state to hopefully get some hard, hardship funding um, but that will, but with that, there's a portion of a match that we'll have to be able to put up by us of our current bond dollars. So there might be some of our bond dollars that will have to go towards that as a match to the state to be able to receive funds from the state. Thank you for that. I'm actually going to read a comment here that's not a question. It says, this is not a question. I just want to thank you for this decision. Thank God no students were there when this incident happened. This move to me is a small inconvenience for our kids' safety. It's much more important. Thank you. And we certainly echo that sentiment. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, can students be given the opportunity or the option to stay online um, instead of going back to school? I know this was covered, but it may be for someone new. Dr. Dinkins, if you just wanted to touch on this again. Yes, with the expansion and offering of our virtual academy, which we will share the number and the website in future sessions, we are planning to have that options for our families. Thank you so much. Uh, question at the bottom is about the town hall meetings being saved and archived. And yeah, I just do wanna reiterate that these are all being recorded and uh, will be made available to the public. I don't know that I see any other new ones here. I see one question. You see one? Mr. Corner regarding uh, from Javier. Okay. How would going into hybrid, going full on virtual affect student transcripts or entries into university? Uh, yes. Javier, yes, um, Javier, I'm not sure if you're a student or a parent, but thank you so much for asking that question. And, and that's really what we want to continue is, is making sure that as difficult and as challenging this is for everyone is, is that we continue to support our students and, and going to college and graduating from high school is one of those priorities. And, and right now we're in conversations with our local community colleges, including Compton College, Cerritos and ELAC to make sure that we are able to expand these options for our students. And, and we wanna make sure that we have this available for high school students, but also for middle school students. And so Javier, I want to make sure that these options are available because it's a great way for our students while they're in school and then we unified to go to college and get college credit. It looks great on your applications, you don't actually physically have to drive anywhere because we're in a virtual environment and it looks really competitive. And so that's something that we want to expand. We do have a lot of students who currently are taking college uh, classes. And, and the best thing is that it's free. We have these agreements with our community colleges where Linwood Unified students can take these classes for free. And it's, it's like an AP class. You get an extra point on your GPA. You get college credit. We've had some students who graduate with an AA degree before they graduate from Linwood High School. And so it's just another thing that we want to make sure that, it, that students and families are aware of, and we're expanding that. And so the, whether you're hybrid or full-on virtual, it's the same course. And when we talk about our virtual academy, those courses are what are known as A through G, which means they're college required courses. We're not gonna give you a class that doesn't count for anything. All students in Linwood Unified, we put them in the, on the college track, whether they want to go to college or not. We just say that's not an option. If you're in Linwood, you're gonna take four years of math, three years of science, et cetera, because we believe in you. Even though you may not be thinking about college, 
And, and that's how we've been able to get more students to say, huh, you know what, maybe this is something that I wanna pursue. And, and if not, it's, it's your decision. And, but you'll have the courses that you need to continue your education. So again, thank you for asking that question. Thank you for catching that, Dr. Crossway. I also realized I only answered the first part of uh, Nicholas Coase's question. Um, and so in addition to the uh, video recordings of these meetings, we will also have an FAQ um, on our website, on our district website, on our homepage, which will have um, most of your most popular questions asked and answered uh, there. So if you want to uh, revisit that as well. Um, I don't know that I see any other new questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I'll just remind you again that, uh, again, if, if we didn't answer a question um, or a question occurs to you later, uh, you're more than welcome to email us at uh, meetingquestions at mylusd.org. And that's up there on the screen. Um, at this time, I think I'm going to go ahead and Throw it back to Dr. Crossway. He's going to close this out. Thank you, Mr. Corner, and thank you everyone again for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to ask our board member, Dr. Castro, if she would like to say a few words before I close. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Crossway and team. Um, I want to thank the families and the community for attending tonight's information meeting and for sharing your concerns. Student safety, staff safety is our priority. And as we together navigate these difficult changes, ongoing communication, keeping you informed of our plan and listening to your concerns will help us resolve this issue quickly and responsibly. We will continue to utilize the various platforms to share information as it becomes available. And we thank you for being here this evening Please continue to share out your concerns. Gracias por su participación esta noche y continúe participando en futuras reuniones. Gracias. Thank you again, Dr. Castro, for your leadership and for your ongoing support. I want to quickly just give a shout out to our translator who has talked the entire time. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. We really appreciate you. And again, Thank you everyone for being here. And again, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends. We're going to be holding additional information sessions. If you're not able to attend, please go to our district website and, and watch these at a later time. Keep in mind that we have the link. So if you have any questions, you can always send them to us at any time. Uh, you wake up at four o'clock in the morning with a fantastic idea, send it to us. And, and keep an eye out for the district survey. We wanna hear from as many parents as possible. And we'll also be doing something for our students. And, and again, just wanna say thank you for your ongoing support. Together, we're gonna continue to get through this. I appreciate every single one of you. Please continue to wear a face mask. Keep your distance, be safe, protect yourself, protect your neighbors and protect your loved ones. Thank you very much, everyone. Buenas noches. And that will conclude tonight's meeting. Thank you very much.